What's up everybody? Welcome to Garden Sound 365. My name is Gardner. It is uh, Sunday, December the 18th, 2016. And today we're going to be making some cables. My rack is growing faster than the amount of cables I have. So when I go play a show on the road, I like to have all my own cables with me. Anyway, I'm going to be making, long story short, I'm making cables today. Making cables today, jeez, why is it so hard to say? I'm making some cables today. I'm going to make some cables for you. They're going to be TRS cables, which are tip ring send. I'll explain more about that later. Uh, making your own cables is a far, far cheaper way of maintaining a studio and having all your cable runs be reliable and and of good quality without spending a bunch of money on cables. Spending money on cables, spending a bunch of money on cables is one of the biggest scams in hi-fi audio. Do not spend buttloads of money on high-end cables. It's all snake oil. It's all bull crap. Also, my big shop light that I normally use to give better lighting in these videos isn't working today, so I have to deal with subpar lighting, which really makes me frustrated. It's been kind of a frustrating day. I don't know why, I've just got this low simmer of frustration going on, but whatever. We're gonna roll with it, because that's the only choice we have. I upload a video today. I can't not upload a video today. So if I'm frustrated, I'm sorry it's coming off that way. Sorry I'm coming off that way. I'm so sorry. I'm actually not sorry. It's like, <sighs> I'm ready for this channel to take off. This channel to take off. I'm ready for this channel to take off. This to happen. I need, I need this channel to take off, so I can quit going on the road. I want this channel to take off. I don't know what that accent was, I just, I don't know. Alright, so you want to solder some cables, let's talk about the stuff you're going to need to make that happen. You're going to need cable. Alright, now this is just called microphone cable. The reason it's called that is because it's got ground and positive negative. Um, so you've got all three. Uh, different types of cabling in here. It's, it's shielded, um, and it's uh, it's nice. It's nice quality. It's thick. It's made by GLS Audio. Good stuff. Got a spool of this. You can get it from Amazon. Um, I'm going to include links to all of these supplies in the description below for people who are looking to do this themselves. All right. You're also going to need wire cutters. Now you don't have to have fancy wire cutters like this with you know different stripping utilities inside of them, um, but I have these because it makes things easier. So wire cutters. Again, this isn't necessary. It just makes things easier. This is a cutter crimper tool. It crimps, crimps, strips, and cuts wires uh, right there if you need to. This is extremely useful for um, when you put the wire in here. It grabs it and then pulls it apart and actually strips it here. You can see the mechanism up close. Pretty cool, right? Um, again, this isn't necessary, but it makes things easier. If you start to notice you're making mistakes, wires aren't working, you might consider getting a multimeter. Um, this is also useful for anything you do in the, around the house involving electricity. So if you don't have a multimeter, I'd suggest you go ahead and do that. You're going to need solder. Rosin core solder, which is far superior to flux core. Um, this is Alpha Fry. You can pick this up online, or you can pick it up. Um, you can pick it up at like Ace Hardware. That's where I got it. All right, you're also going to need connectors, um, and these can be these can be whatever you're <laughs> whatever you're connecting. Um, in this case, we're using TRS. Here's what TRS means: Tip Ring Send. So this is balanced, right? When you connect an audio cable, sometimes you'll have guitar line, which is unbalanced. Um, instrument cable would only have two segments. You see how it's got a middle segment in there? Um, a lot of patch cables are TRS because you can send left, right, and ground through it, similar to a microphone cable. Um, so this has all of the capabilities of an XLR cable, but it's, it's, it's not XLR, it's quarter inch. This is not an instrument cable, this is not a speaker cable, this is TRS, tip ring send. Uh, another thing that's helpful is, this is called helping hands, and what it does is it holds the cable in place, it allows you to solder a lot easier, rather than holding it both with the solder, and it's almost impossible to do that. Some guys are really good at that, but not me. Um, so this really helps me a lot. Oh, one more thing you're going to need, heat shrink. So this is, this is heat shrink, and what you do with it, um, when you're done making a cable, you slip this around the base uh, to protect the cable from ripping the connections out. It's just an additional layer of protection there. 
uh, for your cable. And you'll see, you'll see more about that. We'll get, we'll get more into that as we go. So different colors of heat shrink. So I have an entire box of different colors of heat shrinking. Um, okay. Um, so I've got enough connectors here to build one pair, one stereo pair um, of, of cable, which is all I need right now. All right, so the first thing you want to do is cut your cable length to the size of uh, the send that you want. So for me, I'm going to need about six to eight feet. Um, so what I'm going to do, that's about right. So what I'm going to do now is cut it off, grabbing it so that I don't pull the wrong size of it at the same time. There we go. Okay. So. All right, got my cables. Put that spool up. Okay, now that you've got your cables, you wanna set one of them aside. And we're gonna strip the wires out of the end. This is, the, this is not a fun part, but you gotta do it, so. Here we go. So I'm gonna grab my strippers. LOL, not that kind of stripper. And I'm going to strip off the end, just like that. Now inside here, you're gonna notice that there's a couple of different, let me see if I can focus that better. So inside here, you're gonna notice that there's a couple of different, like, um, strands of wire, okay? You've got these um, copper looking guys right here, okay? Uh, and then you've got a red wire, see that in here? There's a red wire in there. Uh, there's also a white wire There's the white wire right there. And uh, I don't know if you can see that. There it is right there. I think you got all this cotton fabric, right? So clean this up a little bit. This taken care of. Um, I'm going to strip these two wires because they have copper wire inside of them. So I'm going to go ahead and strip that casing down a little bit. One. And... Good. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing to the other side of this cable. Done. Alright, so now that we've got both ends of our cables um, nice and trimmed and ready to go, uh, we're going to talk about connectors. So, here's our connector. This is how it comes in the package. It'll have a little plastic sleeve around it, uh, but that's about it. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to open up the connector by just twisting the base. And it twists right apart. Okay, so we've got the jacket right here. Set that aside. Plastic insulator to insulate the connections inside from the jacket. Because if the connections touch the jacket, your connection won't be grounded, you'll get a lot of buzz and feedback. There are one, two, three places to solder the cable to the connector. This one right here is the tip, this is the ring, this is the send. So it's not important that you know that, it is, however, important that you are able to solder these the same each way. If you've got needle nose pliers, these might come in handy too while you're working. Ah, the right tool makes all the difference. That's so much easier. The soldering iron. Mine is a very nice soldering iron that my wife bought me a long time ago is a Weller, Weller soldering station. Um, it's got a voltage control down here to control how hot you want the iron, an on and off switch, and a very nice soldering iron with a good tip on it. Also, it has a tip cleaning sponge that I'm about to go fill with water right now. Let's talk about the order of things. Because you can't really just put everything on at the same time, otherwise you'll end up soldering yourself into a hole. So what I mean by that is you've got to put on the jacket, the insulator first. Because once you put on the connector, you're not going to be able to fit that over the connector. You also want to make sure that you put on the barrel, right? So 
Actually, I did this backwards. Shit. I had screwed this up so many times. Okay. Take your heat shrink. Put that on first. Now, with that assembly good to go, see what I'm saying? We can put on the tip. So here's where the helping hands come in handy. All right, so I'm gonna see if my soldering iron's nice and heated up yet. Clean off the tip a little bit. Um, then I'm gonna get my uh, solder out and I'm gonna prime the tip just a little bit. Yeah, see how it's just nice and smoking right up? That means you're ready to go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, and this might not make a lot of sense if you don't do a lot of soldering, but I'm gonna prime these, these uh, leads a little bit with some solder. Okay, and I'm gonna prime the connector. Okay, connect neutral to neutral, positive to positive, ground to ground. Alright, that's good. Now let's do the ground. Alright. That's soldered. Now let's do the positive. There you go. Now that everything has been soldered, I'm going to crimp this back around the cable lead. There we go. So that's crimped back around. And now I'm going to pull my... Okay, then you're going to pull your heat shrink over top of the lead like this. And this is what I was talking about. So if you'd done this out of order, you wouldn't be able to put your heat shrink over the cable like that. That's the pur purpose of it too, is it shrinks down and grabs that and grabs the cable so you can't pull the leads in, around when you pull the cable in and out. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Alright, so now I'm going to do the same thing to this side and we'll catch back up after I'm done with that. Alright, so the next thing you're going to want to do after you're done with all that is find your wife's hair dryer. And we're just going to go ahead and heat shrink these bad boys onto the cable. This works faster if you have a heat gun, but you can see there how the cable's all nice and wrapped up. Alright, then you're going to take your insulator, put it on top of the shrunk heat shrink, and then your barrel. And you're just going to... Boom! I used yellow for left, so this is my left cable. Well, I hope that was helpful. That's how you solder cables. Um, I'm going to go write some music now with my newly soldered cables. My name is Garden Sound. See you all tomorrow.